Did I tell you about Sligo when we geeked there? That's a crazy story. It is for us. Sligo, as you know, Western yeah, yeah. Ireland. Um, Great mid, place. Yeah. Uh, nothing much there. But there was this big old church that booked us in. And uh, it sold out. And it was filling up. And this promoter, Patrick, he got all this burly. I think he got the Irish rugby team as um, security. And we're in this old church and there's beautiful stained glass windows and we're getting changed in the vestry and all, all not nice Catholic lads. And um, we were playing through U2's first PA and the paint, someone had painted it dark blue type thing. And we started with the gig and then it went, whoa, oh, it went crazy. And then the stained glass windows got put through the church. And it was the Irish fans outside that couldn't get in that were bricking the windows and the guardy turned up there was police ever there was a full scale riot outside it was absolutely mental we kicked off we made the papers everything and we had to abscond once we'd done the gig to the um, one of the rooms and patrick went here's your money lads this paid us out in all these punts but like like five thousand punts so, right i'm off See you later, type thing. He went. And then one of these security guys come in. He must have been six foot five, 18 stone. Where's Patrick? Has uh, he paid you? Has he paid you, lads? Went, no, no, got no money on us. Like, ah, the bastards. So there are all these like security guys that had not been paid and they were ready for kicking off. There's all the windows went through, there's guardy outside, there's people getting arrested, took away in right ones. I think what's happening in Ireland at the moment, you know, with the immigration. Yeah, I'm gonna that, cut that's going on. Yeah, I'm gonna cut you off. Is it Goldstones the village? I think the the inhabitants are about three thousand or four thousand. The, um, going to fly in a thousand immigrants. I don't know where from. Could be Canada, doubtful, to this little Irish village. So the press have vilified the mothers that are um, protesting, you know, with the cups of tea and the flasks and whatnot. We don't want these people coming as uh, far right Nazis. Yeah. There's no, there is no far right in Ireland. That's just, it's just a made up term to vilify anybody who steps out of line these days. But I think Ireland is going to lead the way in Europe for a proper revolt. And it is crazy, isn't it? You've got this little population, and then you want to add like what would be twenty five percent extra overnight. People that don't know your culture, history, traditions, don't care about it. Uh, it's a recipe for disaster. Well, there's a, there's a little village in Germany. 600 people in this village. They've brought 2,400 immigrants into this, <laughs> this town, village, or whatever it is. So four times the population of this village. Diversity is weakness. Because if you infiltrated a, a South American uh, Amazon tribe with diversity from Europe, that would decimate that tribe in the Amazon rainforest. So diversity is not a strength, it's a weakness. If you look at the clergy plan and what it meant, I mean, everybody, it's, everybody who's mentioned that over the years has been pushed down as a conspiracy theorist. But the guy Kalergi, he wanted to rid Europe of the white race, basically. And what's not to say that that is not what they're doing now. So is the, is the idea, where the censorship and everything that's going on in this country, not just this country, around Europe, is the idea there will be civil unrest and they know there will be civil unrest at some stage. What, how will they stop that? Now, if they put our military people on the streets, are they going to go 
fighting against their own people, their own families, or are they going to be conveniently carted off to a war that's been created somewhere in the world? That could be Ukraine, Middle East, even Far East against China. And then they've got a ready-made army who doesn't give a toss about the people of this country and they will carry out orders to go and create martial law. It's an age-old thing, isn't it? H.D. Wells talks about it. He wrote about it. Shape of things to Like probably... anything, the more power they get, the more power they want. Yeah. And COVID was the perfect example. They got them powers through alleged emergency powers mm. and they don't want to let go. And if you notice, during COVID, they changed that much legislation in government and put that many new rules into place. And they're still doing it all the time. They're just, they're just chipping away, chipping away. The latest being, I, I believe, is all this that's going off with the farmers and everything, which there's mass protests all over Europe and around the world. But where do you see it on the media? It's being kept very, very quiet. Control the food, control the people. It's as simple as that. I see Iran as it's the last, they're, they're one of the last pieces of the jigsaw that haven't got a central bank. And everything is about control of central banks. Every war that we've been to, I think there's only about three countries and Iran's one of them who, who hasn't got a central bank. The other one, there's North Korea, Iran, and I forget who the other one is. A few years ago, there was a few. There was Afghanistan didn't, Iraq didn't, Libya didn't. See a pattern there? Yeah, yeah. They all have now. I saw a photograph of Iran in the 70s with all these beautiful girls and everything in swimwear and all that at a beach. Yeah. And then you see them now, and they're all fully clothed with just their eyes poking out. So, some have got metal masks on. They actually do have metal masks. You would not let it lie, would you? <laughs> but they do. They do have metal masks on. So I don't know if that's one part of the religion or whatever, but some of them actually have metal, metal masks on the face with just eyes showing. That's bullshit. I've not seen it's that. No, look it up. You'll find one. You'll find it. I know. You can, you can throw a picture of that up. <laughs> I'll Will find do. it for you. Will do. 1979 to 1980 are, as you've just said, completely different. You've got girls uh, with the trannies, not the trannies that we know, the transistor radio type next to the car parked on the beach. Wireless. Bikinis. Wireless. That's the word. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then 1980, full black death shrouds. Yeah. I just think it's, oh, it's awful, that. But, uh, that, but it's, for me, that's just a form of control. The, the control is the thing that people are after, but they use religion to get there. Because mm. half of these people who are preaching this, they don't stick to their supposed religious beliefs. Well, I might become a Scientologist. I think it sounds great. What's not to like? The nutters. I don't think so. I mean, these Thetans could don't be Don't put that, cut that, cut that. They'll be <laughs> after me. They'll be after me. <laughs> YouTube, this is sarcasm. It's British humour.